The best magicians are the ones with an ability to change something in a way that no one else can understand. But still, there are a few curious ones like us who love to analyze as to how it was done. So, be it Shin Lim's amazing card magic, or Steven's famous Rubik's Cube magic, hello and welcome back! And today, we are going to figure out the secrets behind some of Got Talent's most famous magic tricks. Okay, let's get started. The first trick, the amazing card magic. Shin Lim, one of the best close-up card magicians in the world, performed an incredible illusion on America's Got Talent which captivated the attention of everyone around. Here's what he did. He calls upon the ever-exciting Tyra Banks on stage to be his volunteer for the trick. Then he takes out a deck of cards and spreads it on the table. He tells Tyra to pick any random card from the spread out cards and write her name on that selected Queen of Spades card. After showing her initials to everyone, Shin Lim puts her signed card back into the deck. Now, doing some magical gesture, he makes her card appear on the top of the deck. Then he takes that card and rubs it on his chest under the shirt. Now, when he reveals the card again, the magic happens, as the card has turned blank. Finally, he reveals his chest area where he rubbed the card, and what do we see? He has the Queen of Spades card printed on his chest, which made the card to turn blank. So, how did he do it? Well, here's the secret. To make it easier to understand, let's divide this trick into parts. The first part, how did Shin Lim know the card Tyra selects from the deck and had the exact card printed on his chest? Well, he forced the card he wanted onto Tyra, using a famous technique known as forcing a card. Also, if you observe carefully, no one inspected the deck of cards spread out on that table, where every single card in that deck was a queen of spades. And now you know it, how Shin Lim forced his selection onto Tyra as she was totally unaware and had no influence whatsoever on the card selected. So, it was obvious that he already knew in advance which card she'll pick, so he got the real tattoo of that Queen of Spades card printed just before the performance started. Also, if you see this image of him on the red carpet, just before the show, some part of that tattoo is seen printed on his chest area. Now, some of you would only imagine why Tyra's name is missing from that printed tattoo, well, we'll leave this part for the comments section. Moving on to the next part, after he puts the signed card back into the middle of the deck, how did he make that card to magically appear at the top of the deck? Well, the deck you see is another deck, and Shin Lim, during this moment, exchanged the deck for this part of the trick. But from where did he bring the other deck? The table comes in picture here, and it has a hidden shelf on its side, inside which the gimmick deck was hidden which he secretly switched when the camera moved away from him. Also, the black tablecloth concealed the view of the secret shelf. Now, once he switches the deck, the card you see at the top of the deck is a gimmick card. It is one single card which has a flap at the end of it to make it seem like a real deck when viewed from the front. So, this is where he inserts Tyra's card, that is, below this gimmick card. Also, there is a crease in the middle of the gimmick card, which lifts it slightly and makes the card easier to fold, when he palms over and conceals it under his hand, and then quickly gets rid of it. So, this is how he made the card to appear on the top. Finally, after picking up Tyra's signed card, how does he make the card blank by rubbing it on his chest? Actually, it's a simple one. In this deck, there was a blank card already placed under the top gimmick card, and he inserted the signed card in between. So, the blank card was placed under Tyra's card, and he carefully picks up both the cards. Also, if you see here, this frame confirms there's a blank card under Tyra's card. Now, to make the magic happen, when he's seen putting Tyra's card under his shirt, at this moment, he leaves Tyra's card inside his shirt. Also, the shirt has a secret pocket underneath where he quickly drops that signed card with the support of his left hand. He does this while pretending to rub the card on his chest, so this makes his hands free and creates the illusion of the card turning blank. Finally, after revealing the tattoo, when he brings his hands back toward the printed card on his chest, at this moment, he gets hold of that signed card from the secret pocket and pushes it into his mouth. All this happens in a fraction of a second to create this amazing illusion. 
the second trick, the Rubik's Cube magic. Steven Brundage, one of the best Rubik's Cube magicians in the world, performed a trick on America's Got Talent which puzzled everyone around. Here's what he did. He brings two bags and goes to the judges' table to start performing the trick. From the first bag, he takes out a solved Rubik's Cube, randomly mixes up all its six sides, and puts it back into the bag. A few seconds later, when he takes the cube back out with his right hand, it was now a solved cube, and then crushes the bag to confirm that there was no other cube present inside. Thereafter, he takes out another solved cube from the second bag, randomly mixes it up, and also lets Simon to mix it up at any random times before putting it back into the bag. Now, similar to the previous one, the cube was solved when he takes it out from the bag, and then comes the main part of the trick. He takes out Simon's randomized cube from the bag and tells him to cover it up on all six sides. Finally, he mixes up the solved Rubik's Cube which he took out from the bag and turns it to match Simon's randomized cube on all six sides. So, how did he do that? Well, before revealing the secret, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get instant notifications of our new video uploads. Now, let's quickly get to the secret. The trick consists of two parts, the one involving the first bag and then the second bag. If you observe closely, after taking out the solved cube from the first bag, he rotates it six or seven times before putting it back in the bag. Well, there's no illusion for this part. However, when he takes out the cube again, he indeed solved the cube one-handed in a few seconds. And Steven, being a professional Rubik's Cube solver, he remembered those six to seven moves and had practiced it many times to solve it in a few seconds using only his right hand. Now, for the second part, here the trick involves misdirection along with the skills. When he takes Simon's mixed up cube, here, if we pause the frame, just remember this side of the cube. Remember the four adjacent yellows. Now, he puts Simon's cube into the bag and takes out a solved cube and then the randomized unsolved cube and hands it over to Simon. Also at the end, when he matched up both cubes, none of its six sides matched with the cube Simon had mixed up. Yes, the one with the four adjacent yellows. So it's obvious, before he put Simon's cube inside the bag, the bag already had two cubes, the one in a solved state and another, the unsolved cube, prepared as per what Steven wanted. Finally, he knew the moves, so he mixes up the solved cube in a very quick time. And indeed, the two cubes match to perfection. So now we know it. Simon's mixed up cube, after he puts it inside the bag, he secretly puts it on the floor in a move of misdirection during this moment. Also, if you see his fingers partially crushing the bag, it confirms that there were cubes already present inside. So finally, the last and a very famous trick on our list, the disappearing spheres trick. Josephine Lee, one of the best female magicians, performed an amazing disappearing act on Britain's Got Talent, which wowed everyone present. Here's what she did. She begins the trick by taking out a levitating sphere covered under a wire cloth and reveals the sphere. Thereafter, she levitates the sphere in air and does some amazing levitation tricks with that sphere. To make it even more special, she even uses a hula hoop ring and passes it around that sphere to convince everyone that there's nothing in between. Then she levitates the sphere to an even greater height and magically drops it in the box placed on stage. The sphere is now in the center of the box. Thereafter, she takes out a white cloth, spreads out the cloth, and what do we see? The sphere disappears and is now underneath the cloth which magically floats in air resembling a ghost. Similarly, she levitates another cloth in air with a sphere hidden underneath. After opening the door, the sphere again peers, but this time around, after levitating the cloth in air, she goes inside the box and closes the door. Finally, the box opens, the levitation stops, and she ends the trick with a unique disappearing illusion that saw her apparently teleport through the box onto the stage. So, how did she do it? Well, this trick has two key scenarios. First, the mysterious levitating spheres, and second, the teleportation part. Now, for the first part, everything that floated in this act were supported by invisible strings and were already attached to each side of the spheres before she enters the stage. 
The strings were connected through the box in such a way that the right end of the strings passed through the top of the opened box, while its left end went through the hole in the right side of the box. And the trick started with the string attached to both sides of that balloon. But still, who controlled their movement? Well, there were two assistants hidden on each side of the stage who controlled the movement of the strings. And now you must have got it. Everything you saw levitating in air were controlled by the assistants and were responsible for the amount of tension and slackness applied to those strings and kept the spheres from dropping. This made the balloon to appear out of the box and then magically levitate into the box. But what about the two floating cloths? Well, they too are pre-attached to the strings on both sides, and also, underneath each cloth is a semi-spherical shaped device attached, which expands and releases. That's the reason why it resembled a levitating sphere when in air, and once she appeared, the cloth drops on the floor, which created the illusion as if the sphere disappeared. Now, regarding the hula hoop, she was able to rotate the hula hoop around the sphere up and down without affecting the string on the left and right side of the sphere. But what about the disappearing spheres inside the box? Well, to understand this, we need to look at the next part of the trick, the teleportation part. Now, the box placed at the end of the stage has a built-in mechanism with a secret hidden compartment at its base. Also, inside this compartment is Josephine's look-alike assistant who was hidden all this while. Yes, she was the one who made the spheres to appear and disappear by placing and hiding it inside the compartment. Also at the end, when Josephine spreads out the curtain, here, she quickly gets inside the curtain while her look-alike assistant was the one who goes inside the box, which made the act look convincing to the viewers. Finally, Josephine reveals herself to end this amazing illusion. So guys, hope you got the secrets behind Got Talent's most famous magic tricks. Which trick did you like the most? The amazing card trick, the Rubik's Cube magic, or the disappearing spheres trick? And name any other magic trick you would like us to reveal. Let us know in the comments below. Do like and share this video with your friends on social media. For more such amazing things, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And finally, thanks for watching.